Hey guys, uh, welcome to the very first podcast of Just Hospitality by Simon and Victoria. Um, I'm going to start off by saying Victoria and I have zero tech skills, so don't expect great production values at this stage. All we wanted to do is we're two industry people who, who think the same in many respects, and we've been looking at the industry and the sector that's had such a hard time over the last couple of years, and we're seeing so many negatives out there. And we get that. But the, the way we've been speaking is there's a lot of opportunities that may be being missed by turning some of those negatives on the head and turning them into positives. And Victoria and I just thought, let's, let's get ourselves out there get some conversation going about what we can be doing differently. So what we thought we'd do is put out 20 to 30 minutes of Victoria and I just chatting every week. Every third week, we're probably going to bring in a special guest to have a chat with us as well. Each week, to, uh, tackling a difficult thing that's going on within our sector and seeing if we can offer some different thinking out there. But what we'd really like to do is get some conversations going. You know, there's going to be... Uh, the comments section, we're going to put this out on YouTube and on LinkedIn, probably with um, various other attachments to our social media. I really like to get some conversations going and we'd like to hear what you think about what we're saying. Have we missed anything? Are we missing the point in some cases? Have you got something else you can offer our listeners that we can put out the following week? Uh, this is what we really want to do. You know, the first thing we want to do, Victoria and I have just had a chat before we started recording this is, Wanted to big, big, a big shout out and a big thank you to everyone in the sector. You know, you've had a really tough time, or we've all had a really tough time over the last 18 months. The fact that people are still sticking in there and still loving it and loving being part of the hospitality scene is just fantastic. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you in advance for any interaction you can give us. We, we decided to go big and heavy with podcast number one. The biggest problem that we're all facing right now is about recruitment. And this is such a big topic, we decided to split it in half. Basically, this week we're going to talk about recruitment and what we can maybe do differently to bring people into our business. And part two of that is actually kicking recruitment into touch long term by talking about retention and the culture and values of a business that hopefully over time will lessen the need for recruitment. But this week it's about recruitment. So I'm going to hand right over to my hospitality and recruitment partner, Victoria, over to you. Brilliant. Thanks so much for the uh, intro, Sai. So before we kind of launch into that whole recruitment piece, first of all, what I want to say is a massive thank you to everyone for listening to us uh, today. I uh, really appreciate all the support you can give, if you can give us a like, share, etc. cetera, um, but really to interact with us, as Sai said, um, because I will pick up, Sai said, in, in a lot of ways, he and I think similarly, um, but equally, in a lot of ways, we're from kind of different areas of the sector. Uh, so we have kind of sometimes conflicting views, but we can then work together and bring them together. So if you guys have got anything to add into that, it would be massively appreciated. Um, so we would really, really like that. Also, just want to give you kind of a bit of background. I'm sure Sai will give you an intro on himself in just a couple of minutes. Um, but so I'm Victoria Creamer. Uh, I currently work for a company called Harry. This isn't to plug Harry, but if you're in the hospitality industry, most people would have come across us at some point or other. Um, but I've been in the hospitality industry since I was 14. Um, waiting tables, started as a runner. Um, I have now moved into the tech space, um, but I've worked across industries, geographies, big focus on hospitality, um, especially in the Middle East for some of the time, um, with airlines, um, hotels, leisure, QSR, et cetera. Um, and now obviously coming back to the UK and working with Harry, uh, a real big focus on the on the hospitality side of things. Um, I love the industry. Uh, I loved it since day one. Quick little funny story about how I got into the industry. So I went to apply for a waitress job um, in a restaurant and it was one of these kind of cook your own food in the middle of the restaurant, which fortunately are pretty much gone now. You had a, a barbecue in the middle of the table. Um, and I went to this interview there and I looked around and I'm like, okay, this, this looks a bit different. I can't really see any barbecues. And I said to the guy, I'm here for my interview. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Sit down. So I went for the interview and he said, okay, um, I've got some good, but I've also got some bad news um, for you. He said, the bad news is this isn't the char bar. 
um, you've come for an interview at the wrong place. But the good news is I really need waitresses and you can start on Friday. Um, so then this 14 year old getting paid something silly an hour came out and was like, oh, my God, do I go into the trial bar? But I didn't. Uh, so I took his job. Uh, so that was how I got into the industry. And yeah, just kind of fell in love with it. I did dip out for a few years, worked in other industries, um, but I think it always kind of pulls you back. Um, so that's that's why I'm here. Vic, it's great. Um, that's a really funny story, how I got into the industry. I actually started as a kitchen porter when I was 12. Um, I wanted a pair of Levi 501s and, I don't know, one of those conversation arguments you have with your parents. And my mum was like, go out and earn your own money. So I was like, okay. So I wandered down the street and the guy who owned the local pub around the corner was mowing his lawn. So I was like, I'll do that for you for a fiver. Okay, <laughs> so he paid me a fiver to mow his lawn. This was a Saturday morning. He said, come back tomorrow and put me on the dishes. Now, it might say something about my age that labour law and ID checks and things were, <laughs> weren't yeah. looked at as much. But, you know, I, I just fell deeply in love with the, with the industry. Um, I worked there for many years in school holidays. I was bottling up. I was doing all sorts of stuff. Ended up doing barbecues for them in summer. And then I went off when I left school and trained to be a chef. Um, worked as a chef for many years and then moved front of house. Uh, worked my way up in the industry. Last 10 years of seeing me, I was the vice president of hospitality uh, for Altaya, based out of Dubai, actually. And we had a lot of very big global brands. Uh, underneath us I came back and wanted to do something a little bit more entrepreneurial and worked with an amazing company as managing director a uh, company called Noble Inns in London which is some really high quality gastro pubs really entrepreneurial business fantastic from there I was chief operating officer of Bella Italia uh, looking after the best part of 3,000 team members and 112 restaurants which was just fantastic that and then I set up my own business and what I do now, I look after a company called Hot Sauce Hospitality. And what we try and do is just, just be there for anyone in the industry that needs it and try and help and support. And, you know, people ask me what I do. Uh, it's, it's funny trying to explain to my kids sometimes what I do. And the best thing, because my kids just go, Daddy works in restaurants. And that's exactly what I do. I just want to be part of restaurants. This is what I love to do. Um, look, that's probably enough about us um, at this stage. I think we need to plow into this recruitment mess, Victoria. It's a challenge. <laughs> We're seeing it everywhere. Everyone's complaining about it. Everyone's upset about it. There's some very good reasons out there. Why, why don't you talk us through some of the reasons and let, let's try and get to some of the cures. Sure, yeah. Um, so first thing, I think Recruitment challenges in any industry, particularly in hospitality, is nothing new. Um, we've, uh, we've quite often had challenges within the industry, um, struggling with attracting people to that industry for a number of, to the industry for a number of reasons. Um, I think it's just come to the forefront right now because there's a combination of factors. So, yes, we've had Brexit. So a lot of people that potentially were working in the industry have now left the country and they're, they're no longer um, able to work um, within the industry. Yes, we've had furlough, so people being on furlough, perhaps not wanting to come back from furlough, people potentially who are in other industries that could have come to work in industry but are on furlough, so why would they come, come to work in the industry when they can sit at home? Uh, for, obviously, that's come to an end last, um, I think it was Friday. And of course, Friday, we've, yeah. had, we've had COVID, which is, I think that's really impacted the, the industry because I think it kind of exposed a lot of vulnerabilities in hospitality. I think we were the hardest hit industry in the whole of COVID. Yeah, we were we were de we were de we were demonised uh, actually in, in in some ways. I think it's fair to say you know we we had the strictest uh, legislation around us. It was always about pubs and restaurants, nightclubs and stuff. Yeah, uh, I, I I do think that will have impacted somewhere, but I do I do think you're absolutely right. A lot of our sector workers moved into other industries during furlough while we were locked down mm -hmm. and they're enjoying different lifestyles um and you're right we we have lost an incredible amount of our european union colleagues and i think that's an absolute crying shame uh but we can't overturn brexit at this stage so no, i was what, gonna what say 
<laughs> I, I, you know, let's let's not get too political on it, but it would be a nice thing if we could. But it is, it is something, something that we talked about earlier that you didn't mention there was was about industry perception. Why don't you enlarge on that for us? Hundred percent, so. So that was what I was going to say. There was all of these these smaller challenges combined, but the biggest overriding challenge for me, and it's it's very much linked to what happened with COVID and hospitality really being brought to its knees as an industry, kind of like no other. Um, it's the perception of working in the industry. And it's not just the perception of people out of industry and what they perceive the industry as, but even people within industry. Uh, so people in different areas of, of the hospitality industry have different perceptions of other areas um, of the industry. And for me, that is a real barrier to people coming into our industry. Um, so I think people tend to have these preconceptions that hospitality is, something, hospitality is a place you work on a temporary basis. Short term, you kind of fall into it. There's not, and I certainly don't remember in school, there being a careers day about, oh, let's go into hospitality. You could end up being an area manager or you could project, progress your career in this direction, in that direction. Kitchen point, kitchen part to MD. Exactly, so si. this, 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 there's all of these great stories out there, but they're just not, for me, they're not spoken about enough and the, the perception of the industry isn't that that side of it isn't talked about and I touched on the perception even within I had a guy a while ago he's a very old friend and he was a um, manager for a five-star hotel in London had some personal problems starting to turn to drink and said I've got to get out I can't stay where there's alcohol and I said okay that's fine but you've got great hospitality experience don't leave the industry to go into QSR there's a number of guys out there that are really keen to get stuff and get great people like you in now um go to go to Burger King go to KC go to McDonald's wherever build your career start again away from the alcohol and he said I've managed five stars hotels I'm not going to work in QSR and it's, that's really sorry that that's <laughs> that's fascinating to me because I've I've worked in I I you know, in, in the Middle East, I, I was the head of Costa Coffee from the Middle East, and then I took Cafe Nero to the Middle East. I did the coffee brands, but I've also done soup high-end stuff. I've done Armani, I've done the Noble End stuff. And to me, okay, the product differs, but the people don't differ. And if the leadership, if your friend's a true leader, he'll be loving that leadership. And he's it, got to realise that the same people, but... You know, it's the same people wherever you go. Hospitality people are hospitality people. And that's the exciting thing about our sector. Yeah. What, what I did want to say, when you talk about perception, obviously I'm, you know, I don't want to obviously reminisce too much. I sound like one of those old fogies in the in Weatherspoons talking about when I was young. Sure when I was coming from, joy, uh, easy tiger. <laughs> um, but when I was coming through, hospitality was a challenge. It was a rough and ready place. It was the time of, you know, it, 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 was, it, it was rough. Let's just put it that way. I've seen over the years so much effort to get rid of that. I don't believe the culture of working crazy hours is, is prevalent anymore. I certainly don't see the bullying and the nastiness anymore. Okay, there is an element of unsociable hours. But I do believe it's more of a perception. And remember, if perception becomes reality, okay? So that it's more perception than reality, but people perceive hospitality as a bad business. I'm seeing some amazing businesses and amazing brands promoting themselves and their employee brand out there. And their employee brand is great. Flexible working, loads of perks, pick your own hours, et cetera, et cetera. But I completely concur with you. We're not, as an industry and as a sector and as individuals, we're probably not shouting about that. We haven't moved on from the stage where we just put an advert on LinkedIn or Indeed and 30 people turn up for trials. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. And with the perception thing, I think things are changing because there's a lot of these guys, these smaller brands emerging and creating amazing businesses. Like you've, you've got the guys at Honest Burger, Project D, they're all small, cool, funky Pizza brands. Pizza Pilgrim, Hawksmoor. I mean, there's some amazing people out there. 100%. And so these are creating a bit more of awareness of the industry and making it a cool place to be. You know, it's great to have these pink donuts and they've got all their branded clothing lines now and things. And 
that's that will attract people but and that's the message we need to get out there overall like it, hospitality is a career it's not a stopgap it's not temporary there's amazing opportunities in the industry we just make need to move forward it's not going to happen overnight but we need to make steps to change that perception of the industry um okay we, okay i i'm with you i'm with you v uh, by the way, I didn't apologise to anybody listening that we would talk over each other all the time because that's what two passionate people do. I mean, Victoria, I've got track record on that. Uh, but luckily, she's 100 miles away, so she can't hit me. But what I will say is that I concur with everything you're saying, all right? And I know a lot of that is we're going to talk about at the end and, and further into next week. But, you know, if I was listening to this as an operator, my first thing would be like, yeah, great, yeah, I'll sort out my culture. I need, I need to do that. I'll, but what can I do today and this week to get more people in? 100%. Yeah, so what, what can we do? So as I mentioned, we, we need to change the industry perception. That's not going to be an overnight thing. But we all need to take small steps. We need to start talking about our industry and be proud of the fact that we work in this industry. When we're talking in social circles, when we're talking in professional circles, we need to be talking Obviously, there's loads more that can be done in partnerships with schools, colleges, long term, bigger messaging and campaigns to, to potentially get out there. But initially, we need to work to just start to change that, that perception. Now, from a recruitment perspective, you mentioned unsociable hours, sign, and things like that. There's people that like working those hours. There's people yeah. that aren't like. I always them. did. Exactly. Like I love getting up at half five in the morning now. So. Working till midnight absolutely doesn't work for me. But the next person won't have an issue with that um, at all. So those small things, we need to get that out of our head that that's a problem. Because like you said to me earlier, perception becomes reality. And if we start thinking absolutely. straight away, it's going to be a problem, it's going to be a barrier, we're then on the back foot when we're trying to attract people to our industry. And that's the next thing we need to do. We need to attract people. So we need to be different. Um, we can't just be run of the mill, common work for us, wait tables. We need to talk about different things that we offer. Like you said, flexible hours. Um, I think you, you mentioned when we were talking earlier, supporting single parents, supporting different situations with different initiatives um, within from, from within our organisation. So we need to be different. And on when that, I'm on, on, on that, it's not only being different. And if, if you think there's a thousand brands or businesses with adverts on, on the usual channels, mm -hmm. how do you stand out of there? Now, I know you've got an example, which I'll let you share. My, I've got an example as well. I saw a thing, an advert come out for Hawksmoor, the steak brand, this week. They're offering £10 to people to come for interviews to pay for their travel, steak mm -hmm. tasting, um, a load of cultural things built around of interviews it's not just an interview sat there where they get a glass of water somebody reads their cv and done it. it's it's an immersive experience where they talk about their brand their values you even get to taste a little bit and let's face it hawks more steak it's worth you know i'll go for an interview for a way if someone's going to give me a tenner and a bit of slice of steak you know this stuff my advice was to anyone would be is find a way of standing out Hawksmoor has done it really well. And I, I want you to share your example that you shared with me this week. I thought it was an amazing, amazing thing. 100%. Yeah, we, we've all got to be different because, like you said, if we all keep putting out these adverts so on the, the usual channels and they're just the standard text adverts, dude, this is what you'll be working, this is what you'll be doing, click to apply. Fine, you'll get some people, but you're not going to get a lot. You need to be different and make it interesting. And my example is some guys, and they're actually in Milton Keynes. I spoke to them a while ago. Um, and their brand's Treat Street. This isn't a promotion, but they basically do really They're cool in Milton dessert. Keynes, they nearly do all the help they can get. <laughs> but they're, they're kind of a, this cool dessert brand, and they do a bit of brunch and stuff, and all these interesting things. Um, and basically, they've got, they've got a videographer just to record the um, GM chatting, kind of walking through the, the um, location, saying, look, come and meet us. You won't, it's not an interview. You'll come, we'll have a chat, we'll do some informal inductions. Um, then what you do is you'll break out into groups and you'll come up with a new dessert idea. You'll brainstorm together and you'll create this really new great dessert concept. Wow. You then go into the kitchen and make the dessert, just like a bake-off 
type thing. It then you come out and it gets judged and people give their opinions on it. Then you do speed dating, interview speed dating. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. With these, with the management, management supervisors, etc. You have a minute and just kind of walking around, quick chat. And then from and from an uh, applicant's perspective, that's great because it's fun. Who doesn't want to go and make desserts on their day off when they're looking for a job? But from an employer perspective, you're really getting a, a complete 360 view on what that person will be like because you've seen them work in a team because they're brainstorming the ideas. You've seen them making the dessert. You've seen how much effort they're putting in. You've seen how they present that dessert. You then get a quick minute to have a chat to just see how their communication skills are and how they potentially be with customers. It's just brilliant. And that's what we have to do. We have to come up with different ideas and we have to be different. Um, because if we, if we keep doing the same thing and it's in a different result, it's the first sign of madness. We have to be different. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, you've mentioned the, the benefits to the employer on, on that, the benefits to the employees they're buying into the brand, whether they know mm. it or not, during yeah. that process. I, look, I think that's great. I think, ultimately, my, my fellow operators have two choices. We sit around money, mm -hmm. uh, nobody's come in, and I'm doing the same thing, and I've got an advert in the window, and I've written on my A-board outside, which is all fine. Mm -hmm. But that's how we acted in 2018, okay? Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a struggle then, actually. Now it's a disaster because we've lost a couple of hundred thousand people. Or we get in a room and we just try different things. You, you know, sweet, sweet tree. I, I haven't been at Milton Keynes for five years. I've got no investment in this business. Victoria sent me the advert. It was a video that got a videographer to do. And I was just like, that's amazing. Because there's some thought going into that. And as a prospective employee, I'd be enjoying the fact somebody was putting some effort into wooing me remember yeah. it's a two-way street we used to always be of the angle that you know it's a play it's a privilege for someone to come and work here and get paid x amount per year or x amount per hour it's reversed mm -hmm. now guys we need to flip the script we need to change how we're thinking about it i i, lo I love those couple of examples we talked about we need to think right down to the bare bones about what makes us a great place to work yeah. What makes us interesting to work for? What makes us different? You know, I, I worked for a business a few years ago and um, it's quite a complex business, uh, an incredible amount to learn. We had ever changing products, which was very high end, and it was there was a lot of integrity around the product. Massive wine list, massive whiskey list, massive beer lifts with 80 plus craft beers. And I used to say at the induction to the team if you do not love this you're welcome to leave now if this isn't something and at the induction by the way we had beer tasting wine tasting we always brought a supplier in um so we bring in cobble lane cured we bring in the torah with loads of vegetables you know there'd be loads of great stuff to taste but if this isn't your thing then go get a job somewhere else and that's fine with our blessing because we pretty much pay the same yeah. But, and to learn our product, to do what's required is really difficult. Mm -hmm. But if you're the right person and you love that stuff and you've got a, a thirst for the knowledge of that, then that's brilliant. So my message is be clear and honest about your brand. Be yeah. open, up front. Tell them what you stand for. And not every brand stands for an awful lot, but mm -hmm. that's okay. Be honest about that. and But you have to find other ways to engage. Maybe it's the flexibility for the, the, the working parent. Maybe it's the flexibility for the work actor. Maybe it's the hours a student needs. Maybe it's a great career path to take someone from uh, uh, chef de party to, to CEO. Whatever that might be, pick your yeah. point of difference and bloody well shout about it instead of going on social media and moaning about it. 100% Sorry, so, and I think you, down. <laughs> no you're completely right and you, you do need to tell because everyone has a brand everyone has values everyone has culture everyone has great stories but how do we know about them you know how do I know that the CEO of company x started out baking the donuts you know I need to know and, and we need to talk about that 
whether we talk about that on our website, our careers website, social media, LinkedIn, wherever we talk about it, we need to talk about it. We need to get the message out there because like you said, the, those people that treat street targeting, they feel that, okay, these guys are a bit different. I'm a bit different. I want to work for them. And that then makes, creates the right match, which then if you bring on the right employees at the very beginning, that will reduce your turnover and then that will reduce the need for recruitment in the future which takes us on to the whole kind of circle of recruitment and retention. Um, which... Well, on, on that, before we, we hit, I, I think we, I think what we should do every week is, is leave our listeners of which right now we've probably got my kids and a cat, um, <laughs> but hopefully it'll build over time. But I think we should leave them with three action points for them to action if they want, debate, themselves or debate with us i know we, we before this we spoke about three if you want to do the first two and i'll do the final one to lead us the next week 100 percent. so i think as a business every business if you're struggling with recruitment which a lot of us are you first of all like you say so we need to stop stop complaining and we need to do something about it so the first thing you need to do whether you are the ceo a gm a recruiter is you need to ask yourself, what am I actually doing about the situation? What am I doing to improve this for our business? Am I just putting the same ads out, but not getting the responses? You won't get the responses to the same ads because Brexit, furlough, COVID, etc. You need to ask yourself what you're actually doing. And once you've established what you're doing, you then need to decide how you're going to be different. And your different isn't necessarily the treat street. Your different is you. And you need to stand out there. You need to promote your brand in your way. Be that putting a QR code up in your, in your front window. Be that putting something on your A board, putting something a bit different, getting someone to come and put a design on your A board, just something a little bit different. So shouting on social media, creating a TikTok. I don't know how to TikTok, but creating a TikTok to, to generate that. My interest. kids will teach you. <laughs> good luck to them um so yeah so so first of all ask yourself and be honest with yourself what am i doing about this situation and then second of all once you establish what you're doing think right how can i be different um and i'd love to hear you what what you kind of said when you asked yourself and what you've decided to do now you decide to be be different so please by all means drop me a message on linkedin or um, comment below so that's one and two of today's takeaways and i'll leave you to do three so I, I think your point's really, really valid. The, the, the thing that I would add is more of a long-term thing, and this is something we're going to talk about next week, and it's about really continuing that look internally at your own business. Who are we? What do we stand for? Because we talk about advertising the roles. The best advertiser of your role, of your business, is your employees. So what are you doing with your current employees to make them sing about your business. You know, I could name two or three brands out there where the employees will never move to another hospitality brand. They love it and their reasons for loving it are very solid and they articulate it beautifully. And as a business, as long-term, that's what you need to be thinking about. People want to be involved with businesses they can that resonate with them, like Victoria's just said, that they're relatable to them as a human being, that make them feel good, that they understand the purpose of, that they understand the why of. And I, I, I would just advise my colleagues out there, I know we're in a crisis and it's, it's here and now, but we always must cast an eye to the long term. What are we doing now to create the company culture for the future? Because, um, I mean, there, there's some great examples out there and there's some terrible examples and we could all, all name them. But here's the thing, right? There's a, there's a reason that I've been in this sector for <clears throat> many years. There's a, a reason that I know hundreds of people have been in the sector for years. It's great. For the right people, this is a brilliant business. I think if we fail as a sector, we haven't shouted loudly about how great it is, you know, and how much you can make a career out of it, how much you can enjoy it. I have a niece at the moment. Uh, who's coming up through the ranks. She's she's um, an assistant manager at a business in Yorkshire and she's doing brilliantly and it's it's wonderful watching her career growth and, you know, 
I, I would I would recommend any young person to come into this sector, but we need to clean up our perception, as you said earlier on. I I, I think that kind of wraps today's chat, Vic. What do you think? Hundred percent. Yeah, just to kind of touch on the, the whole culture and everything, I think that's going to be a really important kind of podcast next week because it, it links very well into recruitment. And as you said, if you've got the right people, your attention's better. That then you're never going to stop recruiting. You always will have to recruit, but it's going to it slowly reduce the the amount of recruitment you have to do because of that retention. And I'm really looking forward to that because I'm really looking forward to talking about. We all say we've got cultures and values, but how are they actually lived in our business? Um, how do you bring them to life? How do you promote them? How do you make sure that they're accessible on and that they're visible on every stage of the employee journey through your business? 100%. And how are they actually being lived? That's what I want to know. I want to delve into a bit more and pick your brains on site, how we can actually get down and kind of be on site and say, this is what we need to be doing. This is our culture. These are our values. All right. Listen, um, Victoria, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed this and I, I, I'm glad you and I are just chatting and the fact we're recording and hopefully some people are listening to it, it is even better. And to anyone who is listening, like like we said, we'd love... This is a conversation starter. There's nothing in it for us. We just love our sector. We love the people and we want to we wanna help solve some problems. So feel free to comment, feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn or wherever it might be. We're going to aim to, to knock one of these out every, every Wednesday. Um, and I, I really hope you enjoy it. And I promise you our production values will get better over time. So with that in mind, thank you very much. See you next Thanks week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.